Hello everyone, my name is Dusk and welcome to another episode of Shock's Video Guides. In this guide, Shox will be playing against EG in control. He is part of Team Evil Geniuses, one of North America's best StarCraft 2 teams. He is consistently a top rank master or a grandmaster player. I believe this season he is 1,320 points with 154 wins and 107 losses and he's currently rank 1 masters in the division Typhoon Kappa. Alright guys, Shox will be spawning as the blue Protoss in the top left position, his opponent in control spawning as the red Protoss in the bottom right position. And in this game I'm going to give you guys a few tips about Protoss vs Protoss, but we're just basically going to enjoy the game. And so Protoss vs Protoss, obviously a very one base matchup, it's just kind of the way how cost effective Protoss units are in the early game and it gets really out of control once you get a slight advantage over the opponent. And so a lot of these games really get down to one base versus one base. And that's I believe that's something that Blizzard should be able to fix in the future as, you know, playing macro and the other two matchups and then playing one base is kind of weird. I mean, you don't really learn that much on one base games. Your mechanics don't really improve because you're never exposed to late game situations. And so hopefully in the future and maybe in Heart of the Swarm that this is it's going to become a more dynamic matchup. Anyway though, uh, Protoss vs Protoss, 9 pylon obviously for both sides, probably going to go for a 12 or 13 gateway from both players, and the beginning is kind of stale. Uh, Protoss vs Protoss can't really apply too much early pressure without cannon rushing, or basically 2 gain or, as you guys know, all in cheeses, and so uh, if you guys want to play like a solid game Protoss vs Protoss, unfortunately it is going to revolve around a 1 base and not really too much early pressure in the beginning. So both players looks like they're going to be going for a 13 gateway. Chrono boosting out twice, gonna get their gas about 50% of the gateway, or basically two supply after the gateway. Gas, gas. And just uh, normal scouting right now. A little bit stale in the beginning. Fun fact about In Control, he is a very active member of Team Liquid and part of uh, State of the Game. And so he's a very active member of the community. I believe he's gone to almost all the MLGs. I don't think he's performed very well in most of them, uh, just because he's outshined by some of the other EG players, such as uh, Puma or Hydra or uh, JYP. Cybernetic Sword should come down immediately after the gateway. A little bit slow by shocks. And so in this game, we're going to see how the spill deviates basically once the players got each other. And so in control, going to get you going for that first zealot. And the first zealot's always good. It's a, kind of a safer build. This is going to prevent you from getting Korean foregate, which is a really, really fast foregate that you basically build only stalkers. And so Shock's right now doing a little bit of harassment. Not very successful in mineral walking, kind of losing that probe. That's kind of big. But what he did scout was the fact that in control had 70... Uh, 70 chrono boosts on his nexus and he also didn't have a second gas so that basically means that he's going to 4 gate and so on this map 4 gate really isn't that good it's actually pretty bad just because 4 gate uh, Protoss vs Protoss previously has basically all of all about 4 gate. Every single map was 4 gate and for better or for, or for worse I mean it made the matchup somewhat simple as that's all you had to worry about but it also made it kind of annoying to play because that's what you're going to get every single game. And so on this map, uh, four gate basically people have been people have found out how to defend against four gate better as the game progressed. So right now, four gate is basically essentially on maps like Taldarim where you don't have a ramp, and it's basically just used to punish greedy builds. And so uh, Shock's right now going to be going for sentries, and he basically is going to be constantly producing sentries off these two gate. And so essentially. In control can only win if Shox makes a mistake, and that's basically a really, really bad way to play. Uh, on this map, four gating is, I don't really recommend it at all, just because one force field can basically lock the ramp, but then in control can't do anything. So basically what you want to do is four gate right at the bottom. You don't, wanna, you don't want to force gate at the top because the, the enemy player can get vision of the top. And so what you want to do is just get as little vision as possible give them as little vision as possible so that they can't warp in zealots because once you warp in one zealot you can warp in more zealots and this build's not going to work but right now at this point Shox does have enough sentries to infinitely force field the ramp he's got a third a fourth sentry on the way and all, he, all he's doing is just making more sentries and basically uh, in control did a build where he's counting on Shox to make a mistake and that's not what I want you guys to practice I want you guys to do solid builds uh, and we're going to throw in cheeses obviously just because the game there's all there's cheeses in every single uh, there's cheeses in every single level 
of the game. There's cheeses in bronze, and there's cheeses in the GSL, if you guys ever watch the GSL. A lot of people cheese, and that's because a lot of players like to play greedy, which is the opposite of a cheese. Well, it's, it's still a cheese, it's just an economic cheese compared to uh, compared to a normal cheese. But anyway, in control right now, we're playing adults, but a mistake he made was actually expanding. And uh, I really don't like this, just because Shox is only on two gates. He's been making sentries the entire time. He's got the two gas in control, knows his warp gate technology is late, and he's not committing to a build. So one of the worst things you can do in this game is commit to a wishy-washy build. Because of what a wishy-washy build does is you're basically not being aggressive enough, and you're not being greedy enough. And so with that, you're basically going to have a middle-of-the-line... Um, you're going to have a middle-of-the-line economy, and you're going to have a middle-of-the-line attacking force. And that's good if your opponent's doing a wishy-washy build, but basically what you want to do is do an extremely all-in build or an extremely uh, greedy build. Or not even extremely greedy build, just a greedy build. And that's just going to give you an advantage. If you do a wishy-washy build, you're really never going to get anywhere with it. And by wishy-washy, I basically mean 4K, but you don't commit to it and do get an expansion afterwards and then try to defend against it. I mean, it's just really weird... Uh, in control basically has no idea what Shox is doing up here. He could be even getting DTs at this point. In control has no idea, no scouting information whatsoever. And he's just going to go ahead and expand. So right now he's basically forced to get a robo sometime soon just because he needs a detection and he needs a scout. There's the robo. And so that robo may not be good against what Shox is doing. And that's exactly what Shox is going to be getting. He's going to go for a 4 Phoenix build. And so he's just going to follow it up with a 4 gate. And what the benefit of a 4 Phoenix build is that he is going to be able to harass the workers. This is going to make in control pull back. If he doesn't pull back, he can just simply come in and kill all the sentries and then move in with his 4 gate. And so in control uh, right now, taking the expansion, and he's going to play a little bit more defensive. He's going to make a few more workers and that's going to allow Shox to actually get back into this game. Now if, if Shox basically didn't make that mistake of accidentally force fielding letting that zone up, this game would already be over. But right now this game is still is over. Shox is going to be going for the uh, Phoenix push. It's just that it's going to come a little bit later because of the mistake Shox made. And so when you are when you guys are watching Shox video guide, uh, we do have a lot of all-ins but that's because there's a lot of all-ins to show and there's also a lot of variations to standard openers. But the takeaway message that I want you guys to think about is what, first of all, we include the replays of the game, of all the games we do, so you guys can actually watch the games and watch decision making as it happens. I know a lot of players do stream, but they don't really provide the, all the replays afterwards. We provide every single replay that Shox plays afterwards, and we also provide guides on specific units. So right now, back to the game, four phoenixes coming out, and the flat pattern is really nice, avoiding the Zelnaga towers. In control right now, having to have to make that first observer just because uh, it could be DTs, and he sees a really really scrappy force from Shox right now. So he's gonna he's thinking he's pretty far ahead, just because he thought he did a lot of economic damage to Shox. But then these four Phoenixes come in. Now what you want to do with this is not essentially use all of your all of your energy on the Phoenixes. You basically want to get the Protoss to pull back, and when you get the Protoss to pull back, you can bust up the front. So right now, because Stalkers do bonus damage against armor, they really don't attack and kill Phoenixes very well. And so he's just going to basically be able to come in and kill all the Phoenixes. Uh, at this point, Shox is able to come in with his uh, with his Zealots Stalker Sentry Army. He's able to force field the ramp, and then he's able to pick up any high priority units. Now with the Phoenixes, you want to target the Sentries first, then you want to target the Immortals, and then you want to target the Zealots. And so when you target the Immortals, you're not really expecting to kill it. In this case, he did, but mostly you want to just disable it. And so uh, you want to target Zealots instead of Stalkers because they basically, Phoenixes, destroy Zealots extremely quick. And Stalkers, Zealots and Stalkers basically have the same amount of health if you're not really doing bonus damage against them. And so you're, it's much better to target uh, the unit that has that you kill a lot faster with the Phoenixes. Uh, here at Shock's Video Guide, we're actually planning on streaming sometime soon. I believe by the time this video does come out, we're going to be streaming that day. And we're going to be streaming every weekday from 5 to 7 PST. So tune into that. It's completely free. You guys can shock, You guys can ask Shocks any questions you guys want. If you guys have any questions on his builds, and he's going to be able to explain it to you. Unfortunately, uh, he doesn't have a microphone, so he can't really talk while he plays, but that's all right. We're going to have music playing in the background. It's going to be a fun time. And if you guys have any questions or comments about this specific game, feel free to leave it in the sections below. We are going to be including the replay for this game. And additionally, I think I'm going to do a more in-depth version of this build later on as we get more replays. I just wanted to show you guys because we thought In Control was a cool guy, and we thought this was a pretty interesting game. So if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the section below. Otherwise, I will see you guys there.